What the ancients call a clever fighter is one who not just wins, but excels at winning with ease. He wins his battles by making no mistakes. Making no mistakes is what establishes a certain victory, for it means conquering an enemy that is already defeated. Sun Tzu, the art of war. Excuse me for going all full frontal with my pretentiousness, but this is essentially the crux of what I want to talk about today, and I would just rather rip that band-aid off right now and get right into the action. There is nothing quite as visceral or blood pumping as when a game makes every split second branch out into a multitude of possibilities. And for this reason, I love action games. And to be clear, I'm talking about the variety of a uh, beat em up, spectacle, character action, hack and slash, and, you know, game genres are dumb. But today, I'm going to be talking about three of my personal favorite action series Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, and Ninja Gaiden as prime examples of the genre. Ultimately, I think a good action game is rooted in the balance of power and discipline. So it's along the lines of what makes a player feel like they excel in combat and how it can motivate more masterful play. Power is the real crux of what makes these games so enthralling. In terms of character design, these three games establish to the player what is expected of them before the game even starts. Cutscenes and cinematics in games is a topic in its own right, but when used in these games they establish an immaculateness to the character and it inspires and pumps up the player. You don't see Dante surfing on demons and promptly eat the floorboards. The dude has a goofy charm, but the confidence and swagger will be poorly juxtaposed if the player dies. Bayonetta's sexual liberation isn't just for eye candy, but her domination and disrespect of her foes needs to come through to the gameplay. And Ryu Hayabusa's methodical discipline needs to shine through when the player is executing the right combo. The character's portrayal is used to display power and motivate the player. It isn't just to have a cutscene of a character killing a bunch of dudes and then having the player do the same. Just because Dante, no wait, I mean the, the one from Dante's Inferno? Yeah, him. Just because he kills a bunch of people and literally death itself at the start of his game doesn't mean that the player has the motivation to improve or be the best version that they can be. You can literally beat this game by just mashing the B button. If you portray your characters as stylish, disciplined, powerful warriors, the player needs to feel that they earned that victory. Mashing the X button doesn't make you feel powerful, and the player knows that. That's because they're missing discipline, so the player needs to be given ambitions in order to improve. You need to avoid what is known as a first order optimal strategy, which is essentially a skewed ratio of minimal effort to maximum results. If you can clear out a room of enemies with the same simple tactics, then that's a first order optimal strategy. If I can slam the same button and it works on everything and I don't get punished for it, it encourages lazy play. No matter how many enemies I take out, I won't feel powerful because there was nothing that made me earn those results. So why would I even touch harder techniques and risk myself when I can just do this? Wow, incredible! A great action game builds on the concept of power for a player by providing options. If you want your player to thrive in power, they need to earn it through mechanical mastery. To feel good when playing and learning, it's best to follow a distinct gameplay loop built from three simple steps that I call the cycle of mastery. Firstly, these options need to be accessible, either through customizability or designing mechanical opportunities. Secondly, it's best for these options to have a purpose or depth from multiple applications, essentially allowing a player to become more familiar with their toolkit without complicating control schemes or gameplay. A single mechanic that has a hundred uses is always way more interesting than a hundred mechanics that are confined to specific scenarios. Finally, all of these tools need to be complemented so then players can be encouraged to be creative when exploring that depth. This can be from having a variety of scenarios for the player, things like a selection of encounters, enemy types, hazards, level design, etc, etc. But a great way to encourage that depth is through designing customizability and mechanical opportunities with accessible options, so it loops into itself. 
becoming a cycle of layered mechanics and interactions which keeps the player fresh and engaged when refining their skills. So what does Ninja Gaiden do? Well, certain techniques are only available after you level up your weapon, so you need to at least start off by experimenting and learning the basics before getting stronger techniques. But what about once you have those techniques? Then you can just level up and insta-kill your enemies. No, 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 my dude, no, no, no. Although there are techniques like the Azuna Drop, which can instantly kill one enemy, it only works on very specific enemy types that usually come in fast, flanking hordes. There are a variation of enemies which can be used in conjunction with one another in order to create new enemy encounters that force the player to use different weapons and strategies in order to accommodate. First order optimal strategies won't translate well into harder difficulties of Ninja Gaiden, and techniques like the Azuna Drop are really used for their few seconds of invincibility, acting as a desperate pace breaker, giving you the very few seconds to have a breather just in case you're stuck by an exploding kunai. There's depth to the moveset in the sense that the player needs to understand their situation and make split second decisions in order to dictate the best option for each scenario. So, for example, when approaching an enemy, you can use the Flying Swallow technique, which is like a quick dashing zoom attack. It's a simple move, but it's wonderful because it has a myriad of purposes to it in those split second decisions. It closes the gap between you and your enemy, it can be used to escape scrambles, it works well in narrow hallways and you can strike multiple enemies at once, but there are drawbacks to this technique. There aren't many follow-up attacks and it suffers from a bit of landing lag, but in terms of design, this limitation is good. If Flying Swallow had crazy follow-ups that worked on every single type of enemy, then Ninja Gaiden would suffer from first order optimal strategies, and the entire game suffers. The way techniques like Flying Swallow and Azuna Drop are designed is to provide both depth and having purpose behind those attacks. The limitations of their design is a balancing act for the devs so then players can use those techniques with intention and discipline. It isn't just hacking and slashing. You assess your enemies, the arena, and position, and then you make the call to influence the battle with every button press that you make. A good action game needs the sense of depth from its mechanics, so then the player feels like that they have the potential to improve. To reach that ambition of becoming a stylish demon hunter, it's important to provide a wide tool belt of options that the player can experiment with. If you're going to be fighting hundreds of enemies, you need to make something interesting the player can take away from. Bayonetta's witch time mechanic can be triggered when a dodge is timed right, so then you're encouraged to understand your enemies before punishing. Literally. And then, you can go absolutely bonkers on a combo and freely try out all sorts of new tactics and weapon combinations, switching on the fly to go for maximum style. Witch time isn't just a reward for players who understand the enemies, but it allows for free reign so then you can express and experiment with all new combos. But in order for a player to have expression in their gameplay, they need options. Which time or Azuna Drop won't matter if the player doesn't have an ease of access to those options, have follow-up options, or even movement to get to the enemy in the first place. Now Bayonetta has the glorious dodge offset system, so then dodging doesn't interrupt her combos and you get even more reward for paying attention to enemies in your surroundings. The whole game flows so wonderfully and it makes combat loops feel like that you constantly have control since you don't have to try the same setup over and over again just because you wanted to continue a dope combo. The sense of control that comes with dodge offset also plays into the sense of power that the player feels. Flawlessly avoiding damage and continuing without a care plays into the mastery that is expected of you. And it speaks brilliance when a system in a game is built to complement that feeling while further encouraging that discipline to better yourself. Ease of access to a wide variety of options gives players more purpose to experiment with them. With a wider toolkit, a player will have free reign to do what, how, and when they like indulging in the creative freedom of combat mechanics. Devil May Cry 4 has such brilliant mechanical pacing. The player can freely cancel and combo in order to do all sorts of shenanigans. Dante's moveset alone has the capacity of at least six characters in any other game wrapped up all into one. 
With Dante having three weapons and three firearms that could be used in conjunction with five different styles that could be all swapped at will, the player constantly has new options available to them. Not just that, but the style meter is a smooth system that gets the player to pursue mechanical mastery. You're not really going to be getting that smoking sick style by doing the same thing over and over again, so you're constantly encouraged to experiment and try new things. Because of all of these options being so freely available, the skill ceiling of Devil May Cry 4 is near limitless. The toolkit is so diverse that it naturally comes with that depth and it's up to the player to come up with their own savvy style on how to play the game, with every technique and attack acting as another brushstroke in the art of war. Oh, that's my boy Sun Tzu again. Now, the cycle of mastery can be applied to more than just action games, and it's essentially a gameplay loop and design philosophy that helps incentivize higher level of play, potentially pushing a competitive scene or advancing metagame, all of which is pretty important when it comes to increasing the longevity of your game. Just like power, discipline is something that needs to be sought after. Training and having an understanding of what you're capable of allows you to fully appreciate every victory that you earn. With an action game, disciplined play is what lets the player revel in the exploration of dominating power, so you obtain real mastery from recognizing what it takes to be a clever fighter. All sorts of things can encourage that discipline. Ranking systems come in once they understand all of the other aspects of the game. These act as another method to go above and beyond just beating the game, discouraging player behaviors that depend on first order optimal strategies and actively encouraging players that partake in the cycle of mastery in order to pursue making no mistakes so that the player can be exalted for their dedication. These three games play on combat fundamentals in different ways, but they are there to provide a sense of depth that the player can refine and improve at. Ninja Gaiden's concise tool belt, Bayonetta's diverse punish game, and the plethora of potential in Devil May Cry. Getting a sick, smoking, stylin', master ninja, pure platinum, or any other top rank in an action game isn't just about hacking and slashing through a level. It's more than winning. It's about excelling at winning, making no mistakes, and conquering an enemy that is already defeated. Hmm, funny that. So that is my theory on the cycle of mastery and how it fits in terms of action games. I know that the term action game is super broad, but do you have a favorite? What are some other games that you can think of that can be connected to the cycles of mastery? I would love to know. I'm always down for some sick game design discussion. Be sure to tune in again when we will be leaping above and beyond next time inside the Game Design Archive. I would also like to thank Vash the Shell Bullet for recording his high-level Devil May Cry 4 skills for this video. I figured if I were to talk about mechanical mastery, I should actually consult a master of the game. He also gave me a lot of insight into action games which really helped when writing the script. The dude seriously knows his stuff. You should check out his video that covers Nier Automata, which is one of my favorite games to come out this year. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day and stay splendid. player to become more can you hear that that's my fucking birds